Hello and welcome to the very first episode of Team Talk here at the Longin Arena in Al Shakab. In Team Talk we will discuss team tactics, team movements, how the teams are shaping up and of course we will discuss um, how teams are doing throughout the season. We'll give you all the insights just ahead of every round of Global Champions League and we start here in Doha ahead of round one. And before we get on the way, let's invite our first guest. It's Jack Whitaker, um, who is a new face on uh, Madrid in motion, one of the teams that will feature, one of 16 teams that will feature on uh, this year's roster of uh, Global Champions League. Jack, welcome. Um, how do you feel, <laughs> there you go, how do you feel um, to feature on the very first episode of Team Talk? Uh, privileged. <laughs> That's a very good answer. Um, Jack, we've seen you here before. 2020, what do you remember of 2020? <laughs> I remember jumping the wrong side of the wing. And you got eliminated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you learn anything from that? Yeah, I learned to do on the right side of the wing. <laughs> Sounds like a good plan. Uh, Jack, uh, first of all, congratulations on making it into one of those teams. Uh, as an under-25 rider, you made it in on, on merit. Um, do you know what the team expects from you? Uh, I think to jump clear rounds and try and win as many as possible, I guess. And is there any discussion already on, on where you will be? What, what, uh, do, you, do you want to start you first off the team that you can get into the, the, the level and into the rhythm? Or will they feature you straight in the team already here in round one of, uh, of Doha? Yeah, no, I jump the team tomorrow with Vami, so hopefully, hopefully it goes well. They don't, they don't treat you easy, they don't treat you carefully, you have to go straight in. Yeah, straight in the deep end, but like, it's fine. I, I was happy enough anyway to do it, so it wasn't a problem. How was the first... Um, the first getting to know the team, uh, the Van der Vleuten's obviously, we just saw us not jumping behind us uh, in, in the warm-up. How, how is the feeling inside the team? Yeah, very, very friendly. I knew Michael anyway and also, uh, also I do so and we're so, it's all very friendly. I think the whole team is a good bunch of people and hopefully all very, hopefully all very uh, encouraging. It's a very successful team on the Global Champions League. They've been with us for many, many years. They've won the Super Cup in Prague. Um, was there, can you give us an insight on, on the ambition of the team? Uh, what, what, where do they want to finish this season? At the top, like normal, like any, any team, they want to win and they want to, they want to, they want to win. That's all they want to do. And it starts here. Hopefully, yeah. That's right. You can't. You can only start by winning the first one. All right. Hey, Jack. Thank you very much. I know that you have to jump uh, a second horse, so we'll let you go. And there you go. He's a very polite man, Jack Whitaker. Thanks. Hey. Cheers. Jack Whitaker, member of uh, Madrid in motion this year, and from uh, one one talented uh, young man to another talented young man, Marcus Ening. Um, Obviously, the badge Valkeswaard United. You started this. We'll, we'll start with last weekend first. You started this season with a big bang. Tell us about last week here at Al Shakab at the Longin Arena with Stargold. Yeah. Okay. Last week was uh, special. Uh, my horse was amazing all the days uh, for sure in the Grand Prix all three rounds. I think I had an amazing jump off, and uh, yeah, I'm very hopeful for this week. It was one of the first jump-offs in a long time where I didn't see Star Gold kick and buck inside the course. Did you change anything? You always change something. Uh, he has now more experience. Uh, he feels very, very well. He's uh, much more with me now. And uh, yeah, like I said, I hope I can keep it this week the same. For you, it's an important season. You are the defending title champions from uh, 2021, um, but. Um, you've lost a very important man, Peter Felixson. Um, John Whitaker has entered the team. Um, how do you look at the current strength of Valkeswaard United? Yeah, first of all, we have, I think, the most experienced team with John Whitaker, Laura Kraut, Edwina. Uh, so uh, we have strong riders, uh, good horses. Uh, that's hopeful for this year. But like you said, it's a special year, but uh, every year is very important. and. Uh, for sure, also the Global Tour team trophies. You, you talk about uh, horse strength. Edwina has got a few horses that are coming back into the level. John uh, brings two horses. Laura Crouds obviously brings a lot of horsepower. You, at the end of 2021, saw a few horses leave or at least retire. We're talking Prato, we're talking Coronado, um, Comilfo. Uh, how is your stable shaping up to, to attack this uh, 2022 season? Okay, I have Stargold, I have uh, Priam, he jumped already Globals, uh, Kalanda, Funky Fred, a la carte, they also jumped on this level. Uh, and I hope they can do the next step uh, to replace the other ones. Uh, and this is for me also very interesting here. Uh, absolutely. Uh, you were a man who in uh, 20, if I'm right, in 2019, my brain is, uh, my memory is leaving me there. Um, 
you only claimed that golden ticket to Prague, I rem if I remember well, in New York at the final stage. You weren't there for the golden ticket um, in 2021. Are you peaking too early with winning the Grand Prix last week? You can never start too early and uh, last week was a very exciting win for me and uh, that's quite hopeful that I maybe can also do, do it this year to come in the Global Tour Finals. So, uh, like I said, I'm very hopeful. Okay, let's, let's focus on GCL first. Round one comes up tomorrow. Um, did you discuss yet with, uh, with the riders, with team management, who is going to ride first, who is going to ride second, which horses? Uh, yeah, John and me, we are riding tomorrow. And uh, I do Stargold and also John, his best one. They both jumped very good in the Grand Prix last week. Uh, and then we have a backup for Saturday with Evina. And fellow Castlefield. Yes. All right, super. Uh, Marcus Ening, thank you very much for joining us here in the studio on Team Talk. We let you go and uh, best of luck tomorrow. There we go. So that is Marcus Ening for Valkeswaard United, giving us some insights on uh, those uh, team dynamics and also on how the strength of the riders, the, the, the horse strength is uh, shaping up. Don't forget, Marcus Ening, he recently saw uh, Milton, who we saw on the tour with Jérôme Grimm. Milton moved to his stable and Milton is also a potential horse that could feature on uh, Valkeswaard United to make that team stronger and stronger um, as they go. 16 teams will take on this 2022 season and three teams are brand new. Stockholm Hearts is uh, one of them and of course there's also Istanbul Sultans and there's Rome gladiators but the big talk of the moment right here in Doha at Anshakab is of course those um, those Stockholm hearts with Marlin Bayer Johnson with Peter Fidikson with the Philip Arth brothers with Lily Keaton and Lily Atwood a very strong team that will come out here in force already at the first stage of uh, the season don't forget that uh, last year it was already a very strong start from Sh um, from Shanghai Swans and from Scandinavian Vikings sorry not Scandinavian Vikings from uh, Valkenswaard United to take on that um, um, first stage of the season and to set sail for the championship and I think in the meanwhile we have got um, a Viking uh, coming along with us. Here is uh, Evelina Tovek. Evelina, um, great to have you with us. You're not in your riding kit, you're not in, uh, in the warm-up. Tell me why. Uh, my horses, they jumped a lot last week so I have to save them a bit and uh, yeah, so I'll go here and watch. I'm talking, you, you say they jumped, they shone. They were outstanding. You came second in a really tough Grand Prix after Marcus Ening. There's, there's no shame in coming second after Marcus Ening. I spoke to a few of the riders. They said um, round two of that Grand Prix was as high as it gets. It touched limit level. How did you uh, feel that Grand Prix? When I walked the course, I also felt a bit, whoa, well, it's big. But I didn't have so much time to walk it. So I have to tell myself, OK, let's focus on uh, to walk the course and not how big it is, but it, it was big. Yeah. Um, talk to me about uh, Scandinavian Vikings, um, a team that, is it okay to say that they underperformed last year? So Henrik, actually just uh, to, uh, For sure, we can, uh, yeah, we can always be better, yeah. Uh, now uh, you start very strong. You were one of the, um, the key people inside the team. I think you rode one of the most rounds on that team. Um, how does your confidence rise for this season? Uh, I think we just saw Henrik um, there in the back, uh, riding, getting ready for his, uh, for his run, for his warm-up round. How do you look at the team compared to last year? Do you feel you have a stronger team? Do you feel you have a weaker team? How do you look at the 2022 season? Uh, yeah, but I think we have a, a good team. We have a good team spirit also. I think that's important. And uh, yeah, we just have to... Yeah, shoes with shows we have to do, you know, put the horses in the right shows, make a good plan, and then I think we have a good team. You've got Geir Gullikson here, yourself, and Henrik von Eckermann. Uh, what can you tell us about first round Global Champions League um, here in Doha on Shakap tomorrow? Uh, tomorrow it's, it's me and Geir uh, in the team. I will actually jump, jump my new horse. It's the first time in a team, it's a little bit bigger for him. Uh, he jumped the second classes last week and he felt good, so I want to try. Um, it's a nice horse and I hope for this year maybe he can come up a bit and help Winnie too. That's Mobutu, right? Yeah. yeah. We, saw, we saw him come out, I think, halfway through the season last year. Uh, tell us a little bit more about him. How should we look at Mobutu? What, what kind of a horse is he? Uh, he's he's uh, 10 now this year, uh, when I bought him, uh, bought him last year, uh, August, he was quite green, he was with the junior, national junior classes, 
Uh, but it's, it's a horse, I like him, he has a lot of scope um, and uh, I think it's really a horse that can develop and uh, a lot happened now, like this month uh, and it feels like we are a good team together. All right, that sounds very good. So you can support Winner to the La Amante Z. Um, Evelina, thank you very much for joining us on short notice. We just pulled you out of the grandstands and brought you over. We'll, uh, we'll let you go again and uh, best of luck tomorrow. There we go. Evelina Tovek for Scandinavian Vikings, a team that may have underperformed in, uh, in 2021, but um, shows some, uh, some fighting spirit for the 2022 season, especially with Evelina now adding another horse to her, um, to her string of horses to attack this uh, 2022 season. So, last year here, um, strong start from Shanghai Swans and Valka Swartiata to take on that first stage of the championship. And those were two teams that battled all the way through the season. They, they led one after the other, then it was Swans on top, then United on top. And in the end, it was Valka Swartiata that uh, took the final win, the overall win in the 2021 uh, Global Champions League and let's not forget that they also won the inaugural season, the 2016 season of Global Champions League, though that was under a, a different format with teams needing to qualify for the second round of, uh, of Global Champions League. Here in Doha, Qatar, it's, it's quite a notorious arena. As you can see, there's a huge amount of light that falls onto this arena. It's massive in size as well. I think it's 80 meters across and length is just over 150 meters. So it, it actually is um, it has a roof on top, but it is an indoor, both an outdoor, but on a massive ring. Now, the arena itself, because it is so big, it rides very well. There's a lot of space, there's a lot of room. It's very easy to canter for the horses and for the riders. And actually, if you look at the statistics, um, Doha always produces high clear round numbers. Last year, two teams um, finished on a full clean sheet and five teams in the first round jumped, uh, jumped clears. So it will be crucial to jump clears and get some necessary pace into those teams and into those horses as well, should it come down to uh, combined times, which it might, uh, might do. And let's not forget that there's also that new FEI rule. Per commenced second, there is um, a time fault. In the past, it was a time fault per four seconds. Now it is a time fault per commenced second. And that has quite um, a big impact because every time fault will count. They will take every time fault into um, the next round and it will all be added. So every time fault will be crucial. And now if you finish two seconds outside the time allowed, you will also um, collect two time faults. And that will be important in team discussions and team tactics. On my right, for you on my left, but for me on my right, it's Jody Hall McAteer. Jody, good to see you. How are you? Should I should I come down just a little bit? <laughs> Hi Frederick. Nice to see you again. Good to see you too. And um, there were some questions at the end of the season. Is Jody Hall McAteer going to find a team? Your your team of 2021 uh, doesn't exist anymore. But in the end, you pulled it off and you're here. New York Empire. Yeah, I've joined New York Empire this season and I'm very excited and very grateful to Georgina and the rest of the team for giving me this opportunity. Not only are you joining um, New York Empire, you're also joining or you're on the side of Scott Brash, somebody who was assisting you, helping you already end of last year. So that, that gives you that extra support, let's say. Yes, definitely. It's great to be on a team with him. He's got so much experience. And last year, I've been training with the Schroders, but when they couldn't be here, like this week, Scott steps in and helps. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to working together even more. It sounds with, uh, with Georgina, with Spencer, with Dennis Lynch, with Scott Brash, obviously. Um, and, of course, let's not forget, with Harry Charles. Um, there's a very solid team. Um, there's, a, there's a coherent team, there's a team that has been together for a long time. Is that maybe the last thing that you need to step up into this level? Last year it was quite difficult for you, you had to uh, come in often last minute. Maybe now you're better surrounded, is that fair to say? Yes, definitely. I mean, the whole point of the team is the teamwork and the camaraderie there. And last year was a great opportunity for me, but of course I'm definitely excited for the new challenges this year and to be in that environment. There's a new situation, there's a new rule, the, the, the one time fault per one second rule. How do you feel about it? Um, obviously, it's, it's, it's a rule, it's there, um, but it could have a big impact on results for teams. You have to keep your eye on the clock even more. In the past, you could finish three seconds outside the time allowed and catch just one time fault. In this case, that would mean three time faults. 
definitely. It's going to make things a lot more interesting this year and you've got to make sure you're always riding forwards. And of course, normally the way the courses are built, you have to ride upbeat and in a good rhythm. And that's something that I found in my riding last year I had to work on was making sure I got in a good strong rhythm, especially when the fences were bigger, as it makes such a difference. So yeah, it's just something that's going to play even more of an important role this year. Um, we see that over the length of an entire season, um, horsepower is very important for any team um, to, to, to keep going, and especially when the points get expensive and when the final placings on those championship tables are being decided. Uh, what can you tell us about your horsepower? Uh, we saw you um, warm up on Mademoiselle. There's Salt and Pepper, there's Kimosa. How is your team of horses shaping up at the start of this season? I like to think that I'm in a better situation this year than I was last year. Last year I was very reliant on salt and pepper. You know, I'd never jumped to that level before and he hadn't either. But my horses, as I've gained experience last year, I've been able to step them up a level and teach them what I learned from him kind of thing. So, yeah, salt and pepper's not here this week and I have my other two horses and then I have a few at home as well that I'm hoping later in the season, if they keep developing, we'll be able to support him also. Do you think that next to those three horses, there's, there's other horses that could come in and support you in Global Champions League? I like to think so. Definitely at the end of the season, obviously a lot has to happen. And until they do it, you don't know for sure. But they're jumping two star Grand Prix now. So I like to think that hopefully towards the end of the season, if they keep improving, they'll be able to fill a gap as well. New York Empire, with their current lineup, are um, rated fifth, sixth strongest team of, uh, of the season. Do you feel any pressure? Of course. I mean, I can't say that I wouldn't. It wouldn't be normal, but I've just got to try and make the most of every experience and take the most out of the opportunity, really. It's a fantastic team, and I'm just so happy to be here and to be a part of it. Uh, before we let you go, um, tomorrow, GCL Round 1, Global Champions League Round 1, first stage of the season. Who's on the team? It will be Dennis and I tomorrow on the team. So Scott has to sit it out in your place. <laughs> yeah, Scott's horses jumped the big classes last week, so I'm guessing he'll be coming in for round two. Um, and I didn't jump my horses in the big classes last week, so I'm hoping they'll be fresh and ready to go. This show is called Team Talk, but let's let's step away from Global Champions League. Um, did you speak with the team about going to Paris? Who that would go to Paris already? Have, have you got that marked in your agenda? I'd like to go to Paris, yes, and obviously we've all kind of working out who goes where, but for the moment we've not got a plan set in stone and anything can happen, so we'll see. Because we're not talking about Paris 2024, we talk about Paris 2022. <laughs> uh, under the Eiffel Tower, that was, that was some weekend for you. Yeah, that was a very special day for me, and my horse likes Paris and I love Paris, so if I could go there again and try and replicate that result, or maybe even a bit better, that would be amazing. But any of the shows I get to go to, I'm very happy. They're all amazing. All right. With that in mind, we say au revoir, Jody Holm McAteer. Best of luck tomorrow. We let you. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, what is that with the, with British riders? They all shake hands with me. Yeah, it's a British thing. We're polite. <laughs> very polite. Thank you very much. I, I just say, I just wave. Thank you very much. Thank Talk to you later. Best of luck tomorrow. Bye bye. Jody Holm McAteer. They're all so uh, they're all so polite. Those uh, those young British riders, under 25 riders. How important are they going to be in uh, this season? of uh, 2022 of the Global Champions League. Um, Jody Holm McAteer is here. There's also, of course, Jack Whittaker. There's a whole, um, a whole lot more under 25 riders that will try to shine here in this beautiful, shining um, Longin Arena at Asha Cup. This was the first episode. It was a little bit rough. There was a lot going on. It was a little bit hectic, but I ho sure hope that you enjoyed it. There's another one coming ahead of Global Champions League round two here on a GCTV. And if you want to follow those GCL rounds, both round one and round two, and even the Grand Prix, and all the other classes, make sure you subscribe to GCTV, that you have got your live pass ready, and if you want to go deeper into the uh, level of this sport, if you want to know even more, there's a pro pass that has a lot of extra features, so for now, thank you very much for watching. This was Team Talk, we'll see you later, bye-bye.